Hello all, there is a lot of talk going on about national education policy and uh, I thought that we must uh, make everyone aware of the basic uh, principles mentioned in the policy and uh, especially uh, my focus will only be on school education. So let's get started. All right, so we'll start with the national education policy which came out in 2020 and uh, these are basically the agendas which you can see on screen and I'm not going to read it. Uh, so this basically covers everything, all the important uh, aspects uh, of the NEP will be covered through these basic agendas. So let's move to the vision quickly vision what is the vision of the national education policy so whenever we have uh, anything coming out there has to be a vision there has to be a mission so this vision is very important because for the next so many like years like 10 15 years this policy will be in place and this will govern how and where the education of the country is going so it has the following vision very importantly it talks about equitable and vibrant knowledge society it talks about developing a deep sense of respect towards the fundamental rights, duties, constitutional values, bonding with one's country. See, all these things are very, very important. And ultimately, through the education system, it is required that we instill, inculcate these values into our future generations. It also talks about instilling skills, values, dispositions, and support, responsible commitment to human rights, sustainable development. Ultimately, the aim is that the people and the students basically who are coming out of the education system, they should be uh, good human beings and uh, environmentally conscious and aware of all these basic things. And, and this will help uh, the world to become a better place. And this is why this vision has been so wonderfully drafted. Now, moving on to the key principles of NEP. This basically... Uh, will give you the core foundation the pillars which will hold this policy together and uh, the key principles are respect for diversity and local context now in curriculum pedagogy and in policy even so this basically refers to a very important aspect that we often see that uh, local examples and local context is very very important for uh, students to understand things I was just listening to a talk by um, Mr. Sonam Wangchuk uh, in Delhi recently and he was talking about how books uh, basically, you know, we're having uh, F for fan example in Ladakh. So there was no fan in Ladakh and then kids were like, what is this? And even teachers were like, what is this? So, you know, uh, it's very difficult to um, imagine and understand these concepts. Uh, so, textbooks, curriculum, pedagogy, all these things needs to have the uh, local context. It's very important. Then uh, equity and inclusion is very important. Many sections of the society are uh, at a disadvantage and many are not included in this uh, basically an effort to make the education universal. So, it's very important that we focus on equity and inclusion. Then community part participation is very very important and uh, um, basically we anything cannot be achieved if there is no community uh, participation we have to make it a mass movement if we are to achieve anything and in this day uh, nothing goes without using technology we have to use technology to improve how we function and we have to whatever the gaps are basically they, they can be bridged by technology what we could not achieve in the past we can achieve in the future so this is what we have to uh, understand and make a commitment to in, ensure that this use of technology is done then emphasizes on also conceptual understanding now this is a very uh, important key principle uh, we remember that when we were growing up uh, Basically, the focus, uh, unfortunately, was uh, a lot of the focus was on uh, rote learning and remembering facts and uh, not really on the conceptual clarity or understanding of it. But now I'm seeing that uh, many competitive exams, including UPSC and the kind of question they are asking, they require conceptual clarity, not rote learning, not just memorization of facts. So 
it's a welcome change and i hope the same happens uh, in everywhere in school examinations in board examinations etc etc so conceptual understanding we have to focus on then it also talks about unique capabilities um this is also a very interesting concept that uh, see everyone is unique and um, everyone has their proclivities and inclinations and that needs to be uh, recognized and identified and there are some specially talented uh, gifted uh, students which are you know maybe in sports or in arts so that scouting process has to happen that identification has to happen at the early stage so that these specially and gifted um, uh students can be given a better platform then also uh, one of the key principle is to focus on critical thinking and creativity and also continuous review that is also very very important um, for the so many years uh, we have only focus on uh, summative assessments uh, that is exams uh, at the end of the year or something to that effect uh, but now uh, very rightly so and um, in a very uh, good way it's coming out for summative assessments that uh, continuous and comprehensive evaluation so this is already happening and i'm sure with this policy in place uh, it will uh, all the examinations will be of that nature so these were the key principles on which our nep is based so now coming to the first very important part that is the ecce and uh, which is the early childhood care and education for years uh, we when we talk of education we all always only talked about school education that it starts from class 1 10 plus 2 system the old system and the focus was always on classes so we nobody ever talked or cared about what's happening before that so now nep has changed that and a lot of focus on ecce universal access uh, has to be there for children 3 to 6 and a framework will be there there is uh, fln it has to be multifaceted a preparatory class will be there Uh, known as bal vatika it will be called bal vatika so basically bal vatika is uh, before anyone uh, enters class 1 one, one year has to be that bal vatika so basically what's happening in uh, anganwadis or preschool to that effect so this is uh, very very important and uh, now it is included in the foundational stage so these are the various facets of ecce which are happening now in a very interesting fact is that uh most of the brain development the cognitive development of a child happens uh, in this early years like uh, by the time he's 8 most of the brain is already developed so in another interesting uh, fact 0 uh, to 3 also a lot of brain development most of the brain development happens in 0 to 3 now 0 to 3 the children is not even going to any play school nursery and all so he is only with the family primary socialization so the developed countries are even targeting programs Uh, to ensure that 0 to 3 also uh, proper upbringing proper nutrition of children is there so you know things are going on a, another level but right now let us uh, ensure that this ecce happens to 3 to 6 and then they enter the uh, schooling system so this is about um ecce uh, one of the key features and key goals of nep basically is to ensure universal access to education at all levels these days uh, we see that uh, there's a lot of enrollment talking of meghalaya we see a ger of more than 100 ner 100 uh, when it comes to elementary education but when it comes to secondary and higher secondary and of course college the um, enrollment is very low and there are many reasons for that so nep talks about uh, uh, these features through which we can improve the universal access is gross access ratio is also there and uh, which again for meghalaya is very good at the elementary level but uh, it's bad at the secondary and uh, at the college level so bringing back dropouts that will be one of the steps mainstreaming them alternative centers something like um, study centers for distance learning odl mode peer tutoring is also very important because uh, teachers number of teachers may not be enough at certain places so the senior students of the senior classes can be uh, used as peer tutors learning outcomes needs to be adopted and mapped to all the um, textbooks to wherever it's required to provide more schools and to having multiple pathways 
of learning so these are basically the points uh, which will help us to achieve the universal access when it comes to school education when it comes to uh, expected outcomes so now this slide is of what is expected out of uh, NEP once it's implemented universalization of access from ECCE to secondary like everyone should be in school so that is a big challenge I think if you go to the timeline it's by 2030 we have to achieve that we have to ensure equity and inclusion we have to mainstream out of school children we have to attain SDG goals FLN has to be achieved uh, basically FLN uh, by 2025 21st century skills in teaching you know whatever the new uh, methods are new uh, competencies are our teachers have to be equipped in that then school complexes so what are school complexes um, basically in simple words uh, it will have right from the pre-primary till the very end so right now we have it in a staggered way uh, i'll explain this in detail in the slides to come effective governance without governance uh, in any domain nothing will move so it has to be there and the language barrier where it promotes uh, the use of vernacular language in the elementary stage and setting up common standards for public and private school education. So these are the basically expected outcomes out of this. So now how children will learn. So earlier in our days and uh, till very recent times, the 10 plus 2 structure was there. Now the new structure will look something like this where we have foundational, preparatory and middle and secondary. So foundational, class 1, class 2 and before that 3 years in Anganwari Preschool, Balvatika. So this is a very important now and the three, next 3 will be the preparatory stage of class 3, 4, 5 then will come middle 6, 7, 8 and then will be secondary 9 to 12. So this is the new structure and um, uh, one of the good things out of this is that a lot of focus is happening on the foundational stage. There's a separate NCF uh, which has come for the foundational stage. I mean it's a welcome step uh, any day if you don't have the right foundation you cannot build upon that so it's a very very welcome stage and um, coming to the ECC framework as I said that uh, the Ministry Government of India Ministry of Education comes up with all these kind of frameworks for uh, literally everything and then the SCRTs they contextualize it and for example we have uh, DERT in Meghalaya which contextualizes everything uh, for our state and then it is uh, adopted by our state. So these are the um, few facets of ECC framework. One important thing I want to share here is that uh, the school preparation module Vidya Pravesh. So what happens is uh, many times uh, students just enter in class one without any uh, ECCE at the pre-primary level. So NEP talks about a special three month play based school preparation mode for all grade one students. Uh, when they come to the school for three months, they will be prepared for school. So I think it's a wonderful concept and the training of pre-primary teachers in this regard has already started and uh, we will be ensuring saturation happens. So early childhood uh, education, learning for in the formative years. So I remember for so many years I've been moving around uh, Meghalaya and seeing uh, our Anganwaris and although things are now, you know, picking up in terms of ECC, but earlier they were mostly feeding centers where uh, the SNP, the supplementary nutrition packages were given and THR were distributed, the take home rations and mostly it was about that. But now uh, NEP makes it clear that those three years in Anganwadi have to be uh, very very uh, detailed in the way that we have to ensure our children they learn all these things to play based uh, pedagogy uh, that they learn about relationships with nature self-identity ethics teamwork and collaboration through very innovative methods play uh, methods etc by you know making them play games or stuff using uh, innovative TLMs and stuff like that so all this has to happen in the uh, three to six uh, year uh, timeline now uh, FLN as I said the foundational literacy and numeracy is very very important and uh, huge focus has now been uh, from the side of the ministry from the side of the policy as well on FLN which simply means that by grade 3 they should be proficient in reading and writing. So uh, how will this happen there is a Nippon Bharat mission which has been uh, set up basically and uh, 
the work is ongoing on the foundational skills there is uh, you know ensuring that we have early learnings and three month play based school to start the uh, entry into school then you know ensuring library repository content on diksha so there's so many methods and uh, we have to ensure that this happens uh, by 2025 as per the timeline now coming to the curriculum now how this curriculum has to change whatever curriculum and uh, pedagogies were there they have to be transformed uh, by ensuring these four themes are there core essentials which are the basics of learning then how we um, instill critical thinking interactive classes have to be there and experiential learning is there you know people learn student learn more when we show them some kind of a practical and uh, make them go there and uh, learn from their their own experience by doing things so do it yourself diy that kind of approach has to be there and all these things have been included in the curriculum and the ncf will be coming shortly now focus on learning outcomes is very very important see we talk of whether our students are learning or not how much they are learning assessments but what are we assessing on if we have not adopted learning outcomes so everything which is done the textbook the activities everything has to be mapped to some kind of learning outcome so ncert has already done this exercise if you see the latest ncert books they mention the los and they have already mapped it to the competencies so competency based education integration of subjects development of scientific temper working together no silos emphasis on digital literacy multilingual teaching so all these things are important and should be part of the whole exercise while framing the curriculum now the next uh, important thing it talks about is mental health and physical health well being if a child does not feel good if a student does not feel healthy he will not be able to first of all maybe come to school at all or there will a lot of absenteeism will be there irregularities break in the whole routine will be there and he will not be able to uh, concentrate so basically how do we ensure this good mental and physical health and well-being by pro regular health checkups reducing weight of the school bags mandatory skills um hiring counselors focus on children with disability inclusive and caring culture at the school so these are some of the suggestions uh, but i'm sure there are a lot of activities with the teachers and the leaders in the school can initiate to ensure good mental and uh, physical health for our students now coming to the uh, what changes are being done in the pedagogy uh, transforming learning process so these are some of uh, which i have touched briefly in the uh, previous discussions that learning has to be experiential it has to be integrated with everything it cannot be a stand alone it cannot be in silo promotion of t- peer, uh, peer tutoring this i want to give my own example when i was preparing for upsc there was a phase when i was just preparing and then you know there was uh, limited learning in that but once i did my basic preparation i started teaching i started checking answer scripts and that was the real uh, improvement in the in the levels because i was getting feed from so many other um, people and coming across their views diverse views and it's amazing that how different can people think uh you may have read it all and when you write a an answer you may think okay i have covered everything but if you re- read 100 different answers of the same question you will know that there are 100 different types of arguments and this is really fascinating so peer uh, tutoring is very important equal weightage so different things bagless days so any piece says 10 days at least in the academic calendar should be um bagless days and uh, we are framing the guidelines and soon will uh, come up with uh, the guidelines uh, for the state of meghalaya use and uh, <coughs> integration of technology this is uh, this has become basically um, kind of uh, mandatory now and uh, if you don't do it you your methods will not be effective so how to best use the um, ict now textbook with a local content and flavor this i have explained uh, in the previous example of f for fan in ladakh which i have mentioned so 
we need to tweak our uh, textbooks basically and um, ensure that they have the local content and flavor and that way students learn faster and they will understand things uh, in a in a better way so that is very very important that we, that, that state flavor is added and all these things are available on Diksha platform. All these things are available online to be accessed with ease and without any cost. So that is very, very important. Um, India's future and India's leadership, it requires all these things. These kind of, you know, gone are those days when it's just about reading some syllabus and scoring well in your uh, board exams. Now it's more about skilling. Now it's more about having all these uh, important, you know, computational thinking, computational, uh, you know, knowledge and abilities, then mathematical thinking and problem solving approach, artificial intelligence, all these things, you know, have to be understood. Um, knowledge of India. So this also uh, has to be integrated in the whole uh, curriculum of things. And uh, I just want to give the example of NCRTs here because uh, if you ask anyone who has cleared UPSC including me how to start your preparation everyone says okay start reading NCRTs from class 6 to 12 and that will suffice so that means these NCRTs have been structured in a real uh, real good way and it has all the knowledge of the country uh, everything about the country uh, which you should know and which comes handy uh, you know to lead a good effective and efficient life to exercise your rights and to perform your fundamental duties as well uh, so all these things uh, have to be integrated in the curriculum to ensure that um, you know when the kid came graduates out of the school uh, uh, you know system he is well equipped to handle any situation, any exam and stuff like that. NEP also talks about uh, examinations, that uh, how um, certain examinations have to be carried and uh, grade one, grade uh, two, grade eight, basically it has to be, um, it has to move away from rote learning, which we have already discussed. Key stage assessments, continuous assessment, formative assessments have to be there. Um, learning outcomes have to be achieved so these all things have to change uh, it also talks about uh, how the board exams will change and the board exams uh, are suggested to be made easier and uh, you know it is also suggested that certain subjects like mathematics be offered in different levels i mean if somebody is really interested they can go on higher level and somebody can take a mediocre level or a low level basically <clears throat> So um, teachers are to be prepared for a transformation or assessment. Yeah, so this also, so all these things, uh, when it we mention all these changes, teachers also have to be continuously trained so that they can adopt to all these changes. Parak is coming up as a national center for assessment, which will change the whole uh, way the assessments are being uh, undertaken. And coming to assessments, uh, so as we were talking about uh, how people should be assessed. So assessment has to be done. Without assessment, we don't know where we are going, whether our students are learning anything, uh, whether they are learning the right things, whether they are taking the right amount of time to learn, all those things. Assessment is very important and uh, it has to be a continuous assessment. It cannot be a summative assessment uh, because that puts a lot of pressure on the kids as well and uh, AI based uh, things can be used. National Assessment Center, Parak is coming up, NTA will also be working to uh, develop different tests. Holistic progress card. So this slide is also very, very important and uh, it's a very uh, new idea. We remember that uh, when I was in school, in our times, uh, the report card only meant how much did you score uh, in the uh, board exam, half yearly, or the final exams so now we are talking about holistic uh, progress cards which will have the 360 degree multi-dimensional report that apart from the academics the sports health everything i mean skill vocational education all things everything will be there and it will be reflect the true picture of learning for the students and it can be AI based uh, generated and it can be integrated with some kind of a VSK uh, which is uh, will be coming up soon and it can be directly fed to the parents so a lot of things can happen but the idea of a holistic progress card it really appreciated 
and this is something we should be done multilingualism and power of language um again uh, it to reiterate uh, nep focuses uh, and emphasizes that till grade 5 uh, vernacular mother tongue should be used and uh, even uh, it's preferably till grade 8 so uh, that is a very important focus and to ensure that many things can be uh, taken up in fact many states are developing bilingual uh, textbooks also so in english and in the mother tongue so to you know ensure the development happens in both the languages so now coming to schools and the school complexes um by school complexes or clusters uh it means that um, in one single uh, place the facilities from pre primary to class 12th are provided now what happens especially in a state uh, like meghalaya where different terrain and spread out population is that we have anganwadi somewhere then the lp school is somewhere else and then we have up school then we have the secondary and far away will be the higher secondary now for having five different uh, kind of institutions the resources are required more and these resources are not being shared imagine if all these uh, you know lp school up school secondary higher secondary and anganwadi all are at the same place in one single school so resources can be shared teachers can be shared experience can be shared peer le- tutoring can happen they can learn from each other resources logistics can be shared so that is the whole idea of the school complexes and hopefully uh, it also talks about a pairing of schools uh, you know that uh, two school joining hands it also talks about some new ideas like bal bhavan where children of all age group to partake in art related career related and play related activities like a youth center samajik chetna kendras where you know they will be used as to uh, kendras and centers to promote social intellectual and voluntary activities so all these things are mentioned about school complex and hopefully uh, as we move ahead Uh, this will be kept in mind and uh, we will try to integrate the existing one and the new things which are coming up can be in line with this idea of school complexes standard setting and accreditation uh, now this is a very uh, brilliant idea i would say that uh, to come up with a different institution a new institution called the state school standards authority which will be totally different from the directorate of school education and it will ensure the school standards whether you know the basic requirements of having a school of running a school of opening a school is are being followed or not by the school so you know these authority will have some kind of uh, staff inspectors who will go and check and enforce this and this uh, therefore you know this part will be taken away from the directorate and the directorate can then focus on operations and standards can be ensured by this special authority it also talks about school quality assessment and framework because for everything if we have a basic framework then everyone can learn from it and we can build upon it so this is a uh, very important uh, coming to teachers uh, now the nep talks about a integrated four year ba Uh, which is a welcome step and which will become basically the minimum degree of qualification for teaching that includes student teachers by 2030 um so colleges have to adopt to it and uh, some have already adopted and some will because it's a big institutional change it requires a certain uh, logistics and human capital as well so it may require some time to get implemented but yes this is the uh, future of uh, b ed and how things will change uh there will also still be a two year b ed who has already done bachelors uh, so but then this integrated b ed and then you know this has to be uh, the higher ed- education institutions h e i have to become multidisciplinary so you know if more and more colleges provide this four year integrated b ed in the future uh, there won't be any shortage for b ed uh, seats because right now Uh, there is a lot of shortages for bed seats and freshers you know i mean they find it difficult in in our state to get this bed seat and they have to go elsewhere uh, for this bed so that is something which will change with this and um, all bed programs will include training in time sensitive technique and you know so 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 basically bed as a course has to evolve whatever new things have been mentioned in the in the policy in the uh, national education policy have to be also ensure that when 
and uh, people are doing this integrated beard they are told about this they are made experts in this so that they, when they go in the field they already are uh, capable of uh, implementing all these uh, changes which are there and it's, it's so changing so fast is evolving so our beard uh, curriculum also has to involve uh, sorry evolve and then now coming to improving teacher education so there are many things nep has mentioned that there should be merit based scholarship for four year beard integrated there should be nta testing for admission to beard you know there should be uh, empowering of tets at all stages it should be strengthened there should be a framework uh, and there are so many many other steps to improve the teacher education now with a teacher education teacher recruitment and deployment also has to improve we have to strengthen our tets uh, the patterns uh, what we are testing uh, you know the that also has to evolve restructuring of ncte also has to happen and tet has to be strengthened so all these things will be taken care of and uh, uh, to empower our teachers there has to be a continuous training and uh, there has to be tdp now this is a very important term actually uh, when the nep and even before we talked about this uh, teacher professional development this is very very important and because the things are evolving so fast the curriculum has to evolve and uh, the requirements the technology the methodologies are changing so teachers needs to be continuously trained so this is a very Uh, going to be a big challenge because uh, especially in Meghalaya we have a fifty-five thousand uh, plus number of teachers for a um, for a small state of this size. So this will uh, continuous training uh, will pose certain challenges, but this is something which has to be done. Academic leadership is very very important uh, when we talk about uh, schools. Uh, they are institutions in themselves. and uh, i from my personal experience have seen wherever the principal is proactive wherever the principal has all the enthusiasm i mean you know the results are very good and the students coming out the quality is excellent and they are also just motivated by this leader they see every day so academic leadership is also very important to empower our schools and to empower our students and this is what this slide talks about so i will not repeat this um going to the key focus areas so one of the very important concepts of uh, nep uh, they are uh, focusing on socio economically disadvantaged groups so basically uh, there can be different sub categories like based on gender Uh, based on uh, socio cultural identities it can be based on geography they are cut off you know i mean some of the villages in meghalaya in rainy season are very difficult to go so they are mostly cut off uh, disabilities socio economic conditions so all these things there are certain disadvantaged group who are uh, not being given the same opportunities for education so that has to be bridged and to ensure this equity all these steps have to be uh can be taken depending on the state depending on the requirement so one very important and uh, interesting concept nep talks about is the special education zones so special so there are some pockets in the state which will have more of these uh, disadvantaged groups which we discussed in the previous slide so those areas where education has never reached or the standard is low so those can be declared as a special education zones and there can be interventions special interventions special mechanisms special learning outcomes can be framed fee waivers can be given counselors can be provided additional schools can be provided in these areas to ensure equity in education moving to gender now this is also very important that we bridge this gap and we ensure inclusiveness of gender that we ensure safety and rights kgbvs kasturba gandhi balika vidyalayas are doing excellent in the educational backward blocks uh, which i have seen uh, during my tenure in garo hills there were various kgbvs these are basically residential schools for girls in blocks where the female literacy rate was very low and uh, they are doing wonderful and now with the nep they are being upgraded up till class 12th so which which is brilliant and uh, so this is about gender um children with special needs person with disability so in any uh, population 
on an average three percent of the people suffer from some kind of uh, disability but if we look at our school education data the number of uh, students which are with disability are less than a percent which shows that uh, there is some kind of gap and the uh, children with special needs are not being identified or not coming forward to schools to the special schools so how, how we can bridge this gap first of all is we need to uh, identify them so uh, assessment has to be there identification has to be there assistive devices have to be given enabling mechanisms have to be made special schools can be thought of special certificate courses modules nios can develop some online modules for them so many ways we can help these uh, children with special need so hopefully in the coming years we'll see a lot of development on these uh, dimensions vocational education um, earlier the focus was uh, you know um, only after school some kind of vocational education was focused but uh, you know before any ps higher secondary and secondary and now even uh, NEP says 6 to 8 also, you know, upper primary levels also, we need to focus on vocational this thing. Uh, we need to identify the skill gap analysis and we need to, if required, ODL mode can be used, exposure if possible uh, to our students, taking them to different, different sites. Within the area, within the district also, there are many uh, learning uh, platforms where the students can be taken. Loka Vidya is basically uh, local artists and local uh, people with certain skills coming on and teaching students on, on their skills. So this is very interesting. So skills framework and vocational craft. So this basically now the focus of vocational education uh, is more and it has to start from class 6 onwards itself. Parak is basically the National Assessment Center which I talked about and it will use all the technology uh, for ensuring formative assessments. NAS is the National Achievement Survey which is done. States will do SAS and it is suggested that uh, schools assess students on a very regular basis so that the burden is not on the students right at the very end of the academic session. This I have already talked about in the video that uh, certain students are gifted and we need to um, you know, identify them. Teachers will play a great role and if the right platform can be given to these students at the right time, I'm sure, uh, you know, brilliance can be achieved in that particular field. Online and digital education, I don't think I need to uh, tell anyone this. Everyone, you know, has seen that uh, this is everywhere, online content, using of tools, using of online teachings, stuff like that. So without that, uh, we cannot move forward. So all these platforms which are already available and uh, right now maybe we are using a blended mode and in future we'll more, use more of a digital mode. So we have to evolve. Our methodologies uh, and teachings also have to evolve. On education, adult education, uh, there is a brilliant scheme ongoing which is the New India Literacy Program. And uh, under this, um, all the illiterates who are still there, they are being... Uh, coached, they are being helped by volunteer teachers, they are being given uh, study material and um, then assessment is being done, tests are being taken and then they are declared as literate. So this is basically in the next so many 3-4 years, uh, target has been given to achieve 100% literacy in Meghalaya. Also we are uh, doing a lot of trainings on this NILP and if you follow our uh, Facebook page which is the Education Department Government of Meghalaya Facebook page. Uh, uh, you will uh, see a lot of details and post on this NILP and uh, if you are not following please follow because uh, we'll be posting all about education in through this page for all higher and technical and other uh, components of education as well. So NILP another very interesting feature of this is that it also talks about so many other aspects of literacy. I mean literacy if you just ask somebody they will say okay if some person can read or write or understand he's illiterate but now this nilp they also talk about uh, they should have critical life skills they should have vocational skills they should have basic education and you know they should also continue their education if possible so this this, this the concept of literacy has evolved and it has become multifaceted and which is a very good step and uh, uh, hopefully it will improve things further. Coming to the goals and timelines. So as I said, 
uh, NEP has not just simply suggested certain things but it has also suggested the timelines for achieving this which you can see here you can pause the video and have a deeper look I'm not going to read everything but a few important things I want to point out for example attaining universal foundational literacy and numeracy in all primary school schools for all learners so NEP what we talked about the FLN you know that has to be achieved by you know for all by grade 3 by 25 26 so that's a target and then 2030 to 40 will be implementation years and then the next review of the policy will be at 2040 so you know and uh, similarly for other things as well the uh, timelines have been given and uh, universal provision of quality early childhood development care by 2030 so this is also a very important milestone so these uh, will help us plan in a better way so what are the new features of uh, NEP? So these three slides are very important and they give the new features which are uh, because earlier also we had a policy and some of the features are there already. But what is new? So ECC for all universally we have to achieve it by 2030 uh, that is uh, there. Then uh, we already talked about gross enrollment. I already explained the PAL Vatikas which will be before the class one. I already explained the special school three month module for people entering class one. Uh, then I explained about Nipun Bharat also setting up of Bal Bhavans. Uh, then I explained this special education zones in detail, uh, school complexes also detail. I have explained uh, then it also new features also have holistic development of students, uh, holistic report card is something which I have discussed in detail, vocational education. Most of it I have already discussed, inclusivity by, through KGBVs, through gifted children, adult education, NIOS to expand things, Parak I have explained in detail and uh, curriculum, ICT integration, the new uh, 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 structure I have explained. Uh, so these are uh, mostly the new uh, you know aspects of uh, uh, for teacher recruitment and teacher education also most of the points I have covered while I discussed the slides and uh, so basically uh, one thing uh, which I think I have missed here yeah, they have suggested various different roles to now governance also has to change so this is one of the last points uh, that governance also has to change that uh, some new structures have to come up like state school standard authority to ensure standards directorate has to focus on operations state department has to focus on policy making and stuff like that so these are the some of the important changes uh, suggested and uh, already some of them are already done like for example earlier the government of india ministry was called ministry of human resource development mhrd and now it has been re already re designated as Ministry of Education to bring the focus back on education. So this is uh, basically brings us to the end of the NEP discussion. So hope you have liked this video and you have understood the basic pillars of uh, the national education policy. And if you have any comments or if you want me to uh, discuss something in more detail, please let me know. It, this policy is really immense and uh, it's really visionary and we all must understand the basics so that we can work together to improve the state of affairs as far as uh, edu school education is concerned in Meghalaya. So looking forward to your comments. Thank you for watching.